Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing awesome. It is such an awesome day today. We had such a awesome day of uh, worshiping God and learning more, and we had our Lord's Supper, which made me think about um, the marriage of the Lamb, the marriage supper of the Lamb. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, I don't even, I had some words this morning, but I went back to sleep and they escaped to me. So I think I'm going to have to start writing them down. And, uh, but this is what we're talking about tonight. I have my Amazing Grace t-shirt on. Uh, my newest purchase from Facebook. I have a have a company that I really like called Love in Faith and I love their t-shirts. I love the way they fit. I love the way they feel. They're really soft and I love what they say. So let's jump into some prayer. I probably am not going to be on here long because I'm here by myself with Seth. I'm sure he'll probably come in sometime tonight and uh, want to watch something else. God, we just come to you, God, and we are just so thankful. We're so thankful to be part of your kingdom family, that you did invite us to the, mar the marriage supper of the Lamb through salvation in Jesus, God. Thank you so much for the free gift of eternal life and for uh, an eternal home that we can only imagine what it looks like, God. Thank you so much. We thank you because you are on your throne and you are in control, God. You are our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider. You are our shelter in the storm. You are our refuge and our strength. God, you are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. You are from everlasting to everlasting and you are our everlasting father. God, we just praise you because you are magnificent and powerful and mighty. You are the righteous judge, God. There is nothing hidden from you. But God, you are also loving and kind and compassionate and forgiving and patient, God, because you want none to suffer. You want none to perish. God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. Okay. Well, let's jump into some... Oh, wait. I shared a song that I've shared before. But it's really been on my mind. Uh, the past few days and it's called getting ready so that's kind of why I titled this getting ready we are in the process of getting ready for the marriage supper of the lamb when we go to heaven when we are raptured out of here by Jesus we will go to the marriage supper of the lamb and uh, we uh, TJ said a scripture today and so that's immediately where my mind went. Uh, Freddie, last week, preached on the marriage supper of the Lamb. So I've just been kind of thinking about it all week. And um, so this is what I wrote. This song and message has been stuck in my head and heart by Maverick City Music and Upper Room for days now. I know I probably shared this last week, I think it might have been the week before, but the lyrics of this song are so awesome. It just really gives me a visual of what this is going to be like. Total peace and unity of the kingdom family of God. To sit down with the bridegroom that we have so longed to see face, to see the face of, the real face of, you know, like not a picture. I mean. There are so many pictures out there. Well, you know, Jesus has a real, you know, an, a unique face, like we have a unique face. So we, we haven't really seen the face of Jesus. 
uh, not pictures or what we think he looks like. We will behold the face of King Jesus. We will. We will see him face to face. Um, I have had many visions about the rapture, but never the marriage supper of the Lamb. Just like heaven, we can only imagine how beautiful it will be. These are some of the lyrics. Hallelujah, give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb is coming. We are getting ready for you, Jesus. Are you ready? Are you saved? All are invited to this event, but we must be saved through Jesus. God's one and only Son, who gave his life for all. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved. Get ready for this glorious event. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. Time is so short, y'all. It's so short. I feel such an urgency to share with y'all every night because I don't know when my last opportunity is going to be. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. My cat kicked me out of my chair, so I am in like a dining room chair, and I'm not real happy. But I guess the cat rules the house, you could say. All right, that's a little bit better. Okay, well, let's look into some scripture. And I'm going to start with the scripture that TJ read this morning in Luke. I didn't even know where it was. I was going, I bet that's Luke. And I just guessed correctly because I didn't remember. We didn't have notes and stuff today because we did the, we did our Lord's Supper today, which was very special. It's a very special um, service today. Okay, so Luke 22, starting in 15, and this is Jesus saying, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. So this is before Jesus went to the cross. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. So we will, we will do Passover with Jesus when we are in the kingdom of God, when we are there in heaven. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. So he's not going to drink of the fruit of the vine until we come, until we get there. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after, the sup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which, I sh which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth, as it was determined. But woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. And so he was talking about Judas Iscariot the betrayer. So I thought that was a good place to start with this Lord's Supper. But if we look in Revelation, and we're not going to do a lot of scripture tonight because um, I really didn't find that much about it. There's probably more. So if you find, if you think of more, then put it in the comments, okay? Revelation 19.7 says this. You know, I think I want to start with one. I just have a hard time just jumping in the middle of the chapter. I want to see what leads up to it. And after these things, I heard a heaven, I heard a heaven saying, Alleluia, 
salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up for ever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. So blessed are we that are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And God God is going to pour out his wrath during the tribulation. So don't think it's going to be party time. Don't think it's going to be we can be as evil as we want to and we can do exactly what we want to because the wrath of God will come down. And he will judge. He will judge all unrighteousness. So please do not be left behind. Do not be left behind. It is not going to be a party. It is going to be the most evil things that you have ever experienced. We think that what we're going through right now is bad, but it is going to be so much worse because right now we still have the Holy Spirit, which is the restrainer of evil. That keeps the evil back to where it is not just constantly evil. But I don't know if you've noticed, I have. Houston has got a lot of evil stuff going on. They're having a lot of murders. They're having a lot of, I don't know whether it's just because I started following one story and now I'm getting all the stories or whether it is just really a sad, sad place where every day something tragic happens. And maybe it's been like that for years. I don't know, but it's just kind of on the surface that I see it, you know. I get news about Dallas and Fort Worth. I don't see tragedy as often in Dallas and Fort Worth as I do in Houston and some of the other states too. There are some tragic things happening. There are there are kids that are standing up against the police with guns. There are things that, I mean, they don't even make sense. They don't even make good sense. And so that is where we are right now. We are uh, living in Matthew 24 that Jesus talked about. We are, you can go and read Matthew 24. I'm not going to read it tonight because I have read it so many times on here. But maybe go on your own and read Matthew 24 and you tell me one thing that is not happening right now because everything that Jesus talks about is happening right now except for the rapture except for the tribulation everything is happening people are turning against each other um, it's just evil is rampant so please do not be left behind get saved through Jesus and be ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb because it is going to be so amazing. It is going to be amazing. So I think I read my next verse already. So 
So I may want to skip over here. I don't know whether any of this talks about the Lamb of God. I think it does. Yes. So I want to read you a description of... There's really not, that I know of, that I've read, a total description of the marriage supper of the Lamb. There is a description of heaven. Which I think is very awesome. Where is it? It's actually 21 and 22, which is a description of heaven. And if you look behind me, there's a picture of the new heaven and earth, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. I love that picture. I rearranged my pictures so I could have it behind me. Okay. So let's read in 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. There was, I just thought of something. I hope I have volume because I turned down my ringtone today. But I've been able to hear videos, so maybe, I don't know. All right, so let's read this. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, if you can, oh my, that flipped over there. If you can see my picture back here, you can see John on the rocks right there in the angel. You can barely see the angel, but um, that's John. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So we, we as the bride of Christ, are going to be in, in that. Especially if the rapture happens. Um, I mean, I know it's going to happen before the tribulation, but since we're going in the rapture, we will be in that city. We will be part of that city. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. You know, that's how Adam and Eve started out. They started out dwelling with God. Then they got kicked out of the garden for being disobedient. And um, all during the time of Moses, you know, only, only the highest priest could go in behind the curtain to uh, pray to God. So this is going to be a time where God reunites with his people. We will be with God. He will be our God and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. So he will be our God. Not, not the God that's in heaven right now on his throne. But he will be our God. We will be in the same location as God. That's exciting. That makes me excited. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Uh, as I get older, I am having pain, and I am looking forward to no more pain. I'm looking forward to, we won't be sleeping there because there's no night or day, but I'm looking forward to no pain. And, and no drama and no anything that's going to steal our joy like the world does. Um, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, 
I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. That is Jesus. Jesus is Alpha and Omega. Jesus was at the beginning. Jesus is going to be at the end. The beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. So look at this list that will not be included in heaven. And if you are messed up in some of this, get out of it. Repent and get out of it. Um, and all liars. Like, God does not like lies at all all liars all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death and there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of seven last plagues and talked with me saying come he come hither I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So that is what that picture depicts right there, is what John saw. Having the glory of God in her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. That picture is beautiful, but I am thinking that we can only imagine what that really is going to look like when it happens. So this is the description that we have of the New Jerusalem that is going to come out of heaven. To earth in Jerusalem it's going to be the new Jerusalem after after the tribulation after Jesus comes back and destroys all evil then this this will happen okay and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates twelve angels, in names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. So the twelve tribes back here in the Old Testament, their names are going to be written on this, this. It's not really a building, this, this new heaven, this new Jerusalem. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. And in the name and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, an hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper. And the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, 
the fifth Sardin, Sardinix, the sixth Sardius, the seventh Chrysolite, the eighth Beryl, the ninth Topaz, the tenth A Chrysoprasus. I have never heard of that. I have actually heard of stones of these others. Um, the eleventh adjacent, the twelfth and amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was one of pearl, was of one pearl. The street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass, and I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb of the temple, the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor to it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So when we get saved, we have our name written in the Lamb's book of life. So that is what it's talking about. Um... Oh, this is good too. I just saw this. I'm probably not going to read all of it. Well, I got to look it up now. 2217. Okay. And so. 22.12 says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. This is Jesus talking to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right, right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. And again, you know, he said that in 21. He said it again in 22. So if any of these are your sins, get out of them. Walk away from them. Repent. Ask for forgiveness. Get out of those. You know, a lot of people... Um, don't realize it but sorcery is witchcraft you know witchcraft is of satan it is not of god it is not of god he never ever ever did anything but destroy witchcraft and he will come and destroy witchcraft and sorcery and idolatry and all these things you know if if your idols are celebrities walk away walk away because they do not follow God some of them do some do but most do not most do not follow God I Jesus have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches I am the root of the offering of David and the bright and morning star and the spirit and the bride say come and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, whosoever, it doesn't matter who you are, come as you are, whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth these, the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this, this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life 
and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So we are not to add to, we are not to take away. So when people say that sin is okay now because it's 2021, that's taking away the truth. That's scary. That's a scary place to be. When people tell you that they don't even believe in Satan, that's a very scary place to be. We need to fear. We need to fear God in a reverent, not a scary, I'm so afraid of God, but in a very reverent for who he is, that he is, you know, creator of all things. He created us for his plan and purpose, not for our own. And so we need to do as well as we can, walking by his word, walking in righteousness. We are going to stumble. We need to repent. Ask for forgiveness. Repent. Turn away from that sin as quickly as you can. Okay, I think that is all of the scripture that I'm going to read tonight. And I really want my chair back because this chair is even though I have a cushion in it, it's hard. Okay. So let's, uh, I met with God. Well, it wasn't morning. It was afternoon. I need to change that. I'm used to meeting in the morning, but I went to church, so I met him this afternoon. <laughs> it felt like morning, but it wasn't. Okay. So, um, he said, child, I know that song made you sad this morning, but when you or any of my children sing from the heart, it makes me smile. Child, worship is important to me, and the right heart attitude about worship is too. So many are just reading words to me. I want people to mean the words wants us to sing from our hearts. I don't remember what my words were this morning, God. Please help me remember. Because so, I, I forgot. Was it heart of worship? And he said, Child, you will remember when the time is right. I will lead you back to the thoughts that I gave you this morning. Trust me for the message, child. Trust me. So much is taking place, child. So be aware by, by listening to my messengers, my true ones. There will be a shift in power coming up, so be ready, child, in all ways. Soon things will change for the good and bad, too. Keep running your race and finish strong, for soon, in a flash, all will change, child. Help the message. Be clear, God. I feel the marriage of the Lamb, but I think I did it last Sunday. Help me to see it clearly. Okay, thank you. It is what I wrote. I will do it tonight. So at that instant when I had him to help me see it clearly, he flashed a picture in my mind. I don't know if it's really what the uh, marriage supper of the Lamb looks like, but I saw an image, so I knew that I was on the right track still don't know whether this is what he was sharing with me this morning before I woke up. I have no idea. But he, uh, he was okay with me doing this. Thank you for meeting with me this afternoon. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient to me in all I ask. Work for me to please me, child. Keep sharing my truths in the gospel of Jesus. It is so important that all get invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb, child. All must be invited until it is time. Jesus is coming soon, so be ready, child. And I said, Maranatha, God, I am so ready. I am so, so ready to fly out of here. But I know, I know that we are on assignment. I know that he has chosen people that are on assignment for him to share his truth, to share the gospel until Jesus comes. And I felt that calling in 2018. 
I actually felt it before then. I felt it when he started giving me visions and he started sending me dreams. I felt it then. But I really didn't answer it until 2018 because I felt like I was so busy. Now I have more free time that I can do research and I can get still and listen more. I have a longer quiet time than I have ever had in my whole entire life. And I so enjoy it. When TJ was asking today, do you have a relationship with God? You know, three or four years ago, I would have gone, well, I think I do. You know, I spend this much time. I know I do. I know I have a relationship with God. Am I perfect? No, I'm never going to be perfect. Am I? Do I know everything? No, I absolutely will probably leave this earth not knowing everything that I need to know. Because... I am constantly learning and we are constantly a work in progress through Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God and so we will never arrive at who I know it all I don't have to serve God anymore I just know it all I'm just gonna wait for Jesus that is not our job that is not our job we talked about that today to be uh, to persevere to have perseverance, you know, until the end, to keep sharing, to keep talking about Jesus, to keep talking about the good things that God has done in our lives. You know, uh, God has sent me many rapture dreams. Uh, my first one being right after I got saved. And uh, I still remember it, and I remember in my heart I was so sad. Because I knew that I was saved and I knew I was going. But I was so sad for all the people that I knew that I did not know whether they were going or not. So uh, we don't know. You know, we don't know whether people are saved or not. And your family member is that is saved is not going to get you to heaven. It is a decision that you yourself have to make on your own. Everyone has to make this decision on their own. If not, my mama could have gotten me to heaven. But that's not the way that God wants it. He wants everyone to make this decision. He wants everyone to choose. And He will not drag you into this decision. He gives you free will to choose. So I want to offer you an invitation to God's heaven. And this is something that God showed me. This is something that God shared with me. That inviting people into salvation, if I get rejected, they are not rejecting me. They are rejecting His Son. That it's not, a, it's not about me. It's about me being willing to offer, to make the offer, to invite. That's my job. And what happens with the invitation is between God and that person. Because not everybody is going to go to heaven. I definitely wish that they would. But there are going to be some people that just don't see that this is important. And sadly, they won't. But the more we invite people and the more we let them know that God loves them, no matter what they've done in their past, that he knows, like nothing is hidden from him. He knows your deepest, darkest secret that you have in your mind. He already knows. And if it's a terrible sin, he already knows. But he can forgive you. Jesus can forgive you. That is not going to keep you. That deepest, darkest secret is not going to keep you out of heaven. If you invite Jesus into your heart to be your Savior and you accept forgiveness of all your sins, then you're going to be in heaven. That's, that's just how easy it is. It is not complicated at all. Okay, so this is God's invitation into his heaven. Wow, oh, it is hot in here. I'll tell you what, when the Holy Spirit takes over, it gets a little warm. Have you ever been invited? The time is now to respond to his invitation. Repent and turn to the one true God. How to accept his invitation. 
Well, let's read some scriptures that go with salvation. You don't have to know these. You don't have to have these memorized to accept Jesus as your Savior. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none righteous. I am not righteous. I seek to walk in righteousness, but I'm, I'm sure I fail every day. That's why I need forgiveness. Uh, Romans 3.10, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, we all come short of the glory of God. We will never, ever, in these mortal bodies, be perfect. We just won't. But when we get to heaven, we're going to have a perfect body. We're going to have an immortal body. Uh, but God commandeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death, y'all. Get your sins forgiven. Get your sins forgiven because we don't know. Jesus could come tonight. Jesus could come tomorrow. Jesus could come 20 years from now. We don't know. We need to be ready. We need to be ready for this marriage supper of the Lamb. We need to be ready. It's our job to be ready. And Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. So there is no other way to make it to heaven to God except through Jesus that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved it is that simple we have to com confess that Jesus is Lord and we have to uh, believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead and we will be saved for whosoever whosoever we read that in Revelation whosoever whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved Romans 10 13 so I'm going to skip the scripture that goes with this picture because we've already read it so I'm going to skip to the salvation prayer. This prayer does not save you. It is your belief in Jesus. But it is a good guideline because it covers your sins, asks for forgiveness. It's like the ABCs of salvation. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe Jesus is who God says he is. And confess Jesus as your Savior. That's the ABCs of salvation. So I'm going to say this prayer. I'm sorry, I saw something. It was not even, it was like a flash of YouTube, um, advertising something on YouTube. Okay. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you are God's one and only Son. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You were buried for three days and rose from the dead. I believe you ascended to heaven and are preparing a place for me. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior Clean my heart and help me to glorify you. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. So if you said that prayer, 
and welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing, like there's a party in heaven, and uh, your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And like we read in Revelation, if your name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life, then you're not going to be in heaven. Salvation is serious. This is the very most important decision that you can make in your lifetime. Saw a little girl this morning got saved. I don't know how old she is. I'm going to say 10 to 11. She may not be that old. But anyway, it was a rejoicing. Our church rejoiced. But the angels in heaven rejoiced too. So it is so awesome. So if you want to grow in your relationship with God, then read his word every day. And start in Matthew. Don't start in Genesis because you're going to get somewhere in the Old Testament. And you're going to go, I don't understand this. This is too hard. Start in Matthew. Learn about Jesus. Learn about the Savior that you just accepted into your heart. And pray. Pray to God every day. And I am not listening to praise and worship music tonight, but I normally am. I didn't put my little thing on the charger, so I'm sure it's dead. Um, but praise and worship God. Praise and worship Him like He said. He wants our praise and worship to come from our heart. He wants to feel the love that we have for Him through words. A lot of praise and worship is tied back to Scripture. So that is putting Scripture in your mind and in your heart too and sharing it with God. It is so awesome. I love praise and worship music. Okay, well, I am going to do God's blessing. I need to go feed Seth dinner. And you know what? I haven't had dinner either. I think I'm going to have cereal tonight. Because I already, already blew my fasting today because I ate breakfast. So, uh, number 6, 24 through 26 says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Peace is going to be like uninterrupted peace, love, and joy in heaven is going to be so awesome. So awesome. Just think of all the people all over the world that will be in heaven with us. People that we don't even know. I call them kingdom family because they're going to be part of my kingdom whether I know them or not. They are part of God's kingdom. They're going to be part of my kingdom family. I don't know who they are. I don't know where they're from. But we're all going to be together in one place. And the marriage supper of the Lamb is going to be part of the celebration when we all, when all of God's children get there together, I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, sometime during the tribulation. I don't know. Maybe after the tribulation. I don't know. But you know what? I don't need to know. I don't need to know all the details because God does. And he's sovereign over everything. He created everything for his plan and purpose and not ours. So brothers and sisters and Pray and share, warriors. Let's pray. And uh, I found out about uh, one person that passed away this morning early. And another one that's having a major surgery next week. So I'll try to remember to pray for them too. God, we just come before you, God. And we are so excited that you invited us to be part of your kingdom, God. We are nobody. I am nobody, God. But I do love you. I love you with my whole heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength. And God, I feel so privileged to be your child, to be called your child. God, there are so many people out there that are broken in their hurt and they're stuck in sins and they think that it is a good time God but it's not because it's separation from you God please have the Holy Spirit draw these back to you 
Let them repent of their sins, God, and just come back to you. God, we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, God, and that the Holy Spirit would draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. God, we pray for all the truth all truth to rise above all the lies all the things that I hear God truth is coming out and evil can't stop it because truth is like light and once it once it shines on evil it cannot be stopped God thank you for that we are so thankful God that we do walk in truth with with Jesus and that we have the Holy Spirit to give us discernment of what is true and what's not true God we are so thankful for that God I pray that you would be with the family that lost a loved one God that you would just uh, give them peace comfort and strength I pray that this loved one is with you God I know I can't pray anybody into heaven but I know that like you've done the past few times, you'll give me a piece about it. God, I just pray for this other family member of this family that's having surgery next week, God. I just pray that if it's your will, that you would just heal his body. Just heal his body miraculously so that maybe he wouldn't have to have this drastic surgery, God. We know that you're a powerful God would be such a testimony to this family. Many of them are your children, God. And only you know the hearts and minds of people, whether they have accepted Jesus or not. It is not our, jo our job to judge, God. It is our job to share, to share your truth and to share the gospel of Jesus. So God, just give us the boldness to just walk out and just share with whoever needs to hear give us the boldness not to candy coat the message to tell people that hell is real and that people that are not that do not belong to you will not be in heaven and the only way to make their way to you is through Jesus God give us that boldness don't let us stutter just let us lay it out the way it is like it was in your scripture tonight, God, talking about all the saints that were there. But then if you if you are tied up in these things, then you will have your, no part in heaven, God. So just give people the strength to walk away from the sins that are, have them in bondage in their lives and that have separated them from you for so long, God. We just cry out for the souls of the lost, God. And we just cry out for a Jesus movement that cannot be stopped. We pray for a nation that would be under God once again, God. I remember when I grew up, I believed that it was more under God than ever. It is not right now. There are so many people that just do not even want to believe in you, God. And you created them for greatness. You created them for your plan and purpose, God. Just draw them back to you. God, we just thank you again for all the many things that you do, for creating us, for providing for us, for protecting us, for blessing us, God, for just helping us get through some of the worst storms in our lives, God. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, my Pray and Share Warriors, I have been trying to limit my time, but I am nearly to an hour. So I am going to say have an awesome rest of your night and have an awesome tomorrow, which is Monday. Monday is not my favorite day, but once we get through it, it's all good. So much love. God bless you and all of your family members and your friends. Cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.